let's record. Welcome everybody to another session. Today we're going to talk about uh, Revit repetitive item. Um, here I'll just little hiccups. Hopefully not much. Okay, there we go. Not right now. Okay, today topic. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the 2Ds. How do you create like 2D repeating elements uh, for detailings? The next one you want to do is that custom 2D lines. Uh, for example, if you want to do like, uh, remember in AutoCAD you have this line and then there's like a, a text in it. Uh, I'll show you how to create that in, in this particular exercise. Mm -hmm. The next one I'm going to talk about is uh, several things you can do with curtain wall for repeating element. Uh, very fast, very easy. I use it a lot. Like when you see the tower that I did before, like uh, the bentles, that's this is how I, I do it. I'll, I'm going to show you how, guys how to do that. Um, the last two, um, I'll also go I'll go into a little bit depth, like how do you create like repetitive element within like railing, okay? Uh, I know that some people use railing and some people may not understand how it works, so I'm just going to show you how easily you can create like a repetitive items. Lastly, I'm going to talk about is um, how to add repetitive item within families. So if you are creating a families, how do you create like louvers or some other elements inside it so that when you when you stretches, uh, it respects what you what you have, kind of a thing. All right, let's get into the demo. All right, hopefully nothing. Oh, sorry, my, not right now. Do not save. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start is uh, just go into the project itself. Okay, just architecture. So when you first do a repetitive item, um, I always started with the components called the repeating details. Okay, repeating details is pretty, f like by default you have bricks and all you have to do is just draw a line and there you go. Now, how do you build this? Okay, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, the first thing you need to do is have a detail family. Let's assume that you have a flange like that. You wanna create like a repeating item the first thing I would do is that you go into this repeating item, okay? You will edit the type. I would say duplicate, as this, I'm just gonna say repeat beam, okay? Next thing you wanna do is that the detail itself, you just go in here and say, okay, I want this white flange. Uh, you can say fixed distance or fixed number. Now, each one, it's gonna be different, okay? Fixed distance is gonna be, if you know your spacing is going to be uh, at certain distance, let's say 16 inch on center, two meters, et cetera, then you put in that value. Fixed number is gonna be whatever you line you draw, then it's gonna calculate based on that number, okay? For louver conditions, this is probably like, you know, you if you want to make the louver looks pretty dense and stuff like that, then this is where you're gonna use the fixed number. Maximum spacing, it's basically, if you define it as maximum is two feet, if it's less than that, it will adjust according to that. So nothing goes beyond, let's say, two feet. But for now, I'm just gonna go fixed distance. Here, I'm just gonna say 600 millimeter, okay? Now, that's equal to two feet if you are imperial guys. Detail rotate, uh, what happened with this is that if you're rotating, here, I'm just gonna set to none, right now so let's say okay and when you draw it in okay that's what it looks like now this is where the detail rotate becomes handy so I'm just gonna go clockwise and there we go so you basically draw in your beams it's pretty straightforward you can draw like a detail basically just have a component and then you just say specify what you want it to be how easy is that pretty cool right Okay, the next step I'm going to do is that I'm just going to show you guys how to create like a custom kind of a detail uh, line, okay, using just the repeating element, repeating component. So first thing you do, again, I'm just going to go to family, okay. Um, I would just use the detail as much as possible. So first thing you do is just use the detail item. What I would do with this here is that I'm just going to give a spacing itself. So let's assume that this is going to be uh, 50 millimeters. That's fine. 
or I, I should do it in metric or imperial, sorry, so that you guys understand the United States. So here is two inches. Um, I will give it a spacing. So let's assume that the spacing is going to be two inches. Uh, you could adjust it. So on here, I'm just going to give it like two, two and two. Uh, I want to put a text in the middle of here. So the first thing I would do is that I would just go into new. Oh, sorry. Go to new. Uh, family. The first thing you want to do is that if you want to add a text, then what you do is that you just use the, what's known as the metric generic annotation. I'll change the unit to inches so you can see what is happening. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a label. Uh, it could be anything. Just say this is text. And you can do instance or type, but for now, I'm just going to use type. Here, I'm just going to say text. Okay, add it in. Okay, so now you have that. Here I'm just going to change it to one eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. Save it. Then you load it into your family one. Okay. Now what happened is that right now it's it's called family one, but you can just name it whatever you want. Uh, you know, if if you don't want to save the family uh, and you want to rename it, all you have to do is just go in here, go to detail uh, annotations, just rename this to text. That's how I do it pretty fast, so that I don't really need to um, need to save it. And then family, I'm just going to close out of that. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add another per, um, another reference plane. All I have to do is just go in here and say lock it down. Okay, so they're in the middle. And what I'm going to do with here is that I'm going to align it to here, lock it, and align it to here, and lock it. Okay, pretty simple. Next thing you want to do is this one. Uh, I would put in text, give it a value, and say that, okay, it could be model, could be type comment, doesn't matter what you want, but I usually tie it into something. For now, I'm just going to say type to, to model. Okay, for this model, I'm just going to, yeah, what is the value for the model? Oh, it doesn't say anything. First thing, I'll just set to none, and here I'm just going to say one as my value, and set it to my model. Oh, it's going to say that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is that you want to add in a line, or what you could do is that you could do what's known as fill region, right? So you want to thicken the line. You know how AutoCAD, you have this uh, P line where it's really thick? Yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. So if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can use budget lines. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to demonstrate, you know, it's a quarter inch, quarter inch, uh, make it equal, oops, make it equal, half an inch. Here I'm just going to say T for thickness. This one I'm just going to say W. And this one I, I'm going to just say G for gap. Okay. At the end of the day, you're just going to say fill region, okay, and change that to, let's say, black. Is there black? Solid black. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like, okay? Now that's a detail. The next thing you do is that you're just going to load it in. You notice that right now the text is way, way huge, but once you get to like 5, then it's kind of makes sense, or let's say 10. Okay, makes sense. Now in here, for the family one, I'm going to change my model to, let's say, this is 1, okay, just to look like that. Now, if I want to build this into this repeating element, now what you have to do is you go to repeating element and say that this is going to be line 1, and here you're going to say family 1, and let's assume that this is 4 inches spacing, and when I draw it in, ah! You notice that it doesn't respect that. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a bummer. It's a glitch. Okay. In the past, uh, what happened is that you able to put it in, but for this one, for demonstration purpose, yeah, it just goes out of whack. Okay. Alternatively, if this doesn't work, repeating items, there's another way you can actually do it. So here, I'm just going to show you another method. Let's say you want to do that one, and you want to do a string of line. How I would do it. So the first thing I would do is that take this family one and then you put it into another family, okay? 
Now, for this particular family, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to put in my detail line base right here. Okay? So it's like a family, and then you just add on another family. So here, I'm just going to go in here. And what you're going to do here is that for family one, I'm just going to dump it into the family three. Okay? And here, I'm just going to tie this uh, model with the model. Okay, simple as that. That's the first thing you do. And what you're going to do is that you're going to just tie it in. Okay, tie it in, tie it in. And all you have to do is you're going to say uh, from array, okay? You're going to take whatever is the end of this and make sure you set it to either last or you can say second, okay? What it means by last is that if I put it the last one, that's going to be the end stop, okay? And then whatever's in between, it's going to be whatever it is. You could do last or you could do second. What second does is that for every distance uh, the length is, the next one, when you try stretching it, it'll count it as uh, 1.2 meter. Then it's going to have another piece, that 1.2 meter. So for this one, I'm just going to say for last, okay? I'm going to put it at the end, okay? Now this one, you can say, add a parameter. I always go instance parameter and say this is uh, detail. I, I would say this is number of lines, I guess. Okay. Now what you want to do with this is that since the lines is not locked up, so I have to force it to lock. Okay. So to, for all the, um, what I did there is that at the end of the day, you have to lock it to, um, a grid line or this reference plane. The reason why is that if you don't do that, this thing would just go off and, you know, it's it's not going to work. So this is why I kind of have to lock this down and lock this down. Okay. The next thing you want to do is that since you have a length, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another parameter, say, you know, uh, gap. I'm going to call this gap. Okay. Length. Let's say a gap is four inches, okay? The, the next thing you're gonna do is that you're gonna take in the length divided by gap, it's gonna give you the number, okay? So let's assume that this is uh, length divided by gap, it's gonna give you 12. Notice that it changes right there. Okay, next I'm just gonna load it in, put it into a project, and now what I can do is that when I draw a line, the model, uh, so let's assume that that's the model. Let's call one. Does it work? What's going on? It must be not liking me. <laughs> yeah, it's there is a glitch. I don't know why. It, it should come up. If uh, if it doesn't come up, I have no clue what it's do what's going on. Why it's not showing? Yeah, that's a major hiccup. Generic annotation. Yeah, it should show up. Unfortunately, just. Yeah, for some reason, this doesn't show up. All right, guys, that's a glitch. I have to talk to Autodesk what is going on. Because in a previous thing, when I did the same thing, it shows up perfectly. But this particular 2017, yeah, it's a glitch. Okay, enough of that. Let's go into the model side of things. Any questions so far with this? So I'm just showing you two methods. Uh, unfortunately, just the one doesn't show, and then the other second method just doesn't show. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next step. Okay, uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about um, is uh, do curtain wall. Curtain wall is the fun, fun stuff. Okay. Okay, so when you start on a curtain wall, so here I'm just going to go curtain wall. Here, what you have is that you end up with just a straight panel. Okay. Now, if you want to build in something that is, uh, you can actually st keep stretching, and it will continue to add uh, grid lines. The first thing you do is you go into here, I would say duplicate, okay, call this uh, fix number. Uh, I always do vertical, okay. Now what this does is that the fixed number allows you to say, okay, fixed number, by default it's gonna give you whatever, whatever distance you want. Okay, there we go. So here, what happened is that when you stretch this, it's gonna keep the same number. 
until you tell it to say, okay, I want this to be six, then it automatically divides that. So for, by default, uh, the, the minimum um, panel you can have is one, so that it basically splits that into the middle. And what you could do is that you can add a bunch of uh, mullions on top of this. So let's assume that you want to add mullions on top. Then you can say, okay, fixed number. This is where you add it in preset. So here you got vertical mullions. Uh, let's put in, let's say this one. Okay, I'm just going to add in the same one for every single one. All right, let's say okay. And here, what it can do is that if the minute that you add, let's say 12, you see that you know it automatically splits that up. So if you ever want to increase, it automatically stretches. So if you are building a lot of the windows, like uh, curtain walls and stuff like that, this is a perfect example how you want to do it. Okay, any questions so far with this? Okay, uh, if you want to add horizontal, you can also do the same thing. So here you do the same. I would say duplicate and call it horizontal. Again, a lot of this is just building stuff on top of each other. And here, instead of the number, uh, I would say none. Say fixed number. Again, delete the grid line. So this is what you get. Now, there is another one. Uh, I'm just going to go fix vertical delete uh, here what you want is that if you want to have like let's say a fixed distance I always do this so I always create fixed distance uh, let's say five feet okay here I'm just gonna change my fixed distance call it five feet okay you notice that one panel is always going to be shorter than the other so there is an option in here if you want you can say okay if you want beginning you can say center what this does is that it adds the two n to be, you know, uh, equal distance, or you could say one side is going to be at the center. So most of often, how I do it is that when I do my wall, I always put distance first. Okay. Once you change your distance, you say that I want it to be five feet. Next step is that you, if you don't care about like the spacing itself, you want it to be all equal distance, you can always swap it to vertical. What it does is that it makes it cleaned up, so make it all you know, compressed. So that's how I would do it, rather than like individually say, oh, how many numbers I want. First, you start out with fixed distance, then you swap it with uh, fixed, uh, fixed number, then what it does is that it cleans up the rest. And so will that then just use the number that you had as yeah, like for example here, uh, I'll show you it in a quick example. If I want to draw in, like let's say, uh, I don't care about the distance, right? So here I'm just going to draw it in like that, draw it in like that, draw it in like that. Next step is that just change this over to fix vertical. There we go. So they're all just basically just equal distance now. So very quickly, you could just grab all your curtain walls and say, this is what I want, this is what I need, and then bang, it just done, done, does it. So a repetitive item for this is uh, it makes it very, very fast, very fluid. So you don't have to go in individually number it and stuff like that because I've seen people, what they do is that they just do it each individual. It's, it's a lot of pain. Now, the nicest thing about this uh, curtain wall is that you, it allows you to do you know angles. So what angle does is that you can go 45 degree. Okay, you'll respect that 45 degree angle. Okay, if you have another one, let's do another version where I'm gonna say vertical plus horizontal. So I always go V plus H, okay, just as, um, and this is a fixed number, okay? You notice that you can create a bunch of wild patterns out of this, right? So here, if you want to be uh, beginning and, oh, that's fine, let's go center, and let's go 68 or 69. So it could create like a bunch of wild stuff if you want. So it's a very easy kind of a uh, way to do stuff. Okay. In the future, I'll probably go deeper into the uh, the adaptive component because adaptive component allows you to build a little bit more sophisticated skin out of this. Okay. For now, I'm just gonna show you the the most basic because I think this is what a lot of people will be dealing with. And this is how I kind of work with it. And then, you know, if you understand how I work, then you understand like the, the processes inside this. Any questions so far with this? 
you know, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now, one of the things that you have to keep in mind, uh, if you have a curtain wall, okay, you can always do this uh, for curtain wall is that you can have one curtain wall to be something that is fixed number and vertical, and then the other one is going to be, uh, let's say, change it to horizontal, okay? Just keep in mind, because it's a curtain wall hosted within a curtain wall. Just uh, And what happened is that each of this is going to be independent. So if you notice that here, you can say, okay, this one is 90 degree. Oh, geez, doesn't like 90 degrees, so it's 89. Oh, okay, doesn't, doesn't, that's, that looks pretty bad. So that's that. And then you notice that here, you can say, um, let's go 60 degree. Sure, whatever. Okay, so both of them are different, and what happens here is that you can actually add your ultimate uh, mullions around that too. So let's assume that, oh yeah, this doesn't look good. So let's do another mullion. So here I'm just gonna give you the, the big shebang. So here I'm just gonna make a 200, uh, 200 by 200, which is eight by eight inches if you're in Imperial. How you do this is that you take 150 divided by two, okay? Same thing here, 200. Um, this zero, I'll just leave it as it is. And here, what you can do is that you can like create a thick, thick profile frame. And there you go. Now, if you want to break up, break down further, you can always go into the main frame, okay? That's what it, okay? <laughs> Unable to split panel. It's a glitch. I always hate Revit. <laughs> yeah, it always does that. Yeah, it always does that. So here, what you have to do is that let's let's try this. Uh, I'm just gonna change it back to glazed. Okay, let's do another split. Now allows you to do it. This is a glitch. Like I've seen glitch on top of glitch. So it's a it's a funny. And you can go in here and say this is fixed distance. And then if you want, oops, sorry, wrong button. There we go. So all of it is basically curtain wall on top of curtain wall. <laughs> okay. So like if you're doing a lot of transit and you want to transition, let's say one part is going to be one curtain wall, the other part is going to be different curtain walls, and that part is going to be different, then this is how you kind of approach it. Take one big one, chop it up into pieces, select that panel, and then convert that into curtain walls, and there you go. Um, I wouldn't go too deep. Like You could further break this down into, let's say, for example, this panel. If you want to break it down even further, you can always go, okay, fix vertical. Yeah, you can still do that. <laughs> so you can like break it down even further and further and further if you want to do that, right? So I'll leave that up to you guys, uh, how you want to design it. But this is how I kind of do it. If you want to have a curtain wall that's say like different, different patterns, this is how I would approach it. All right, any question? No? Okay, the next step I'm gonna talk about is uh, how you build louvers out of, um, out of this curtain wall. So I know that a lot of people is gonna say, oh, can you send me a louver? Okay, I want to, I want to kind of helped you to make uh, a louver out of this pretty simple. It's a pretty simple process. All you have to do is that, let's assume that this is a louver. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is that I'm gonna lay it out to horizontal. Uh, I'll probably do a fixed distance. Let's assume that this louver um, distance is gonna be four inches, okay? Now, the only thing that you wanna add in for the curtain panel is make it empty, okay? You wanna start out with empty panel. Okay, this is where it's going to get interesting. So here I'm just going to do is change this to uh, this one. That's fine. 150, 150. You can do interior 150. Just keep it all the same. Uh, no, this one for interior, I'm going to make it slightly smaller. So I'm just going to make it, um, sure, let's still go 30 square. But the side, I'm just going to use the same. <coughs> Excuse me. And when I say OK, 
You notice that there's tiny, tiny things. Those are louvers. So you can just basically go to louvers. Oops. And if you want to do rotation, okay, all you have to do is um, have to oops, select this object, go into oh, where's my louver rotation? Ah, here we go. You see, there's an angle. You can say this is going to be 45. And what it does is that your louvers is going to all rotate 45. Yeah, I should. Oh, sure. You can't make it. Okay. I should change this to. Uh, let's not make it square. Let's make it that. Yeah, you can do 45. <laughs> you would notice that, yeah, it does do weird things. <laughs> Just be aware. Because louvers, yeah, they tends to, you know. Like for example, this part. Then you, what you have to do here is that if you do run into this kind of a conditions, you kind of have to put in your own mullion if you can. Oh no, it's this guy. Yeah, you just have to add it in. I mean, that's that's kind of like the. Yeah. Okay. So just be careful. Okay, there's always gonna be glitches. Any questions so far with the louvers? So you can't rotate your louvers that way? You can. Um, yeah, it's one of those things I have to go in and check. Because what happened is that I think it's done through Mullion. Okay? Because I've done it before as well. Uh, let's right, see. So you just create a Mullion that's not. Mm hmm. Uh, shape. Yeah, I think what you could do here is that here, I'll, I'll show you where, where <laughs> you can do it. So, curtain wall, there's rectangular. Okay? I'm just going to duplicate this, okay, call it like 25 millimeter by, let's say, 100 millimeter, okay, and in here you see that there is an angle, call it 45, okay, here I'm just going to change it back to 0, okay, I should make this thing less 2 meter, okay, good. And now what you can do is that you can go in here, go to interior, just change that to that, and there we go, there's your louver. If the louver is too thick, then you can say, okay, 25, 25 divided by 2, copy that, and then this is 100, there we go, there's your louver. Okay? Now, you can also do this for the hor uh, horizontal surface. I know that some people say, oh, you can build vertical, but what about horizontal? So for a horizontal, this is what you use. You use roof, okay? Just say no. Always say no to everything, what Revit says, because they're annoying. Uh, because every time when you get that message saying, you want to attach this to the underside of floor, say no. If you say yes, it takes all your walls and attach it to the underside. And at the end of the day, you have to end up unattached all of that. It gives you a bunch of errors that I don't know what's doing. Okay, here what you can do is that it's the same, it's the same principle. So here, I'm just gonna say, go in here, there's your glazing. Uh, slope glazing doesn't have much. Again, you're gonna go duplicate that and say, this is louver. First thing you do is that you can say, okay, fixed number or fixed distance. Let's say fixed distance, I want it to be, um, yeah, 100, 100 millimeter. Okay. Again, you're going to do the same thing. This is a grid one. Then you're going to go in and do the 25, where is it? Rectangular mall. Oh, there we go. And the rest, I'm just going to use the same. 150. Yeah, I wish. Um, this louver and that could be the same, so you just have one family that works with both, but unfortunately Revit just treats both of them differently, even though they're curtain wall, basically. One is horizontal, the other one's vertical profile. And then, okay, anything else? Oh yes, curtain panels, make it empty. There we go, same kind of idea. Okay, there's your louver. 
Now, if you want to add mullions to this, then you can say, okay, I want to add like a middle part. Okay. Now, it's always going to give you this sort of um, scenario. How do you clean it up? So I always go in here. This is where you say join conditions. Okay. You can say border and grid to continuous. What it does is that it always makes the grid two, whichever the opposite side, to be the continuous. So whenever you add in a grid, okay, it always cleans it up. Okay, that's how you do it for join conditions. If you want to, you know, make sure that they're the same, then that's how you do it. Any questions so far with this? No, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Hopefully you guys are an expert in this because I'm just showing you the, the most basic stuff, how to create um, curtain walls and all that stuff repetitive. All right, the next step I'm going to go into is the more complicated stuff. So we're going to talk about railing. Okay, the railing is the fun part because what happened with railing is that uh, you can create a bunch of stuff with it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in, let's see what, what we get out of this. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Now. Railing is one of those uh, really, really tricky stuff because uh, not a lot of people understand how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm always duplicate. Like if you want to mess around with stuff, always duplicate it. Call this, you know, my railing. Okay. Um, the next thing you want to do is that I'll leave this alone. Don't touch any of this. But if you want to re uh, like add another like piece of this, this is where you add those horizontal. Okay. Um, this is the horizontal. This is where you add balusters. Okay, balusters. This is the 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 most interesting part is that you can add a bunch of stuff into it. So now I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add a bunch of this. I'm gonna start this with let's say a hundred. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this. Okay, the first one is gonna be uh, from base to top element. So here I'm just gonna do is gonna duplicate that. From this one, I'm going to say railing one to railing two. Okay, duplicate, duplicate again. I'm going to go railing two to railing three. Duplicate again. Oops, ah, why did I delete it? <laughs> My mistake, sorry. Uh, railing two to railing three. Duplicate it. Yeah, I don't know why, like, you know, why the delete button is so close to duplicate. I don't know. That's kind of like the UI problem. I wish it could be like right down here so you don't accidentally click delete, right? It's, yeah, it's one of those design choices. I don't know what, why they do it. Okay, so here, I'm gonna duplicate it and say, okay, this is railing four and railing five. Okay, and then duplicate again, and you say railing five to railing six. So make sure they're at the same distance. The reason why is that you can change the distance, but once you change the distance to weird things, what it does is that when you start creating this uh, repeating pattern, what it does is that some of them tends to kind of get out of place. You're noticing why because of this uh, calculation. So here I'm always going to leave it like the same uh, railing six to top element. Okay, straightforward and say okay and okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. You notice that why it's yeah it's always like that. I just want to double check. Okay, railing. Because base railing, host railing. You know what? Let's change it all to host. Let's see what 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 it gives me. Because the weirdest weirdest thing about uh, the railing is that it should respect based on what you have. Um, let's see what I what I'm gonna get out of this. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. It always wants to host from the host, go to the top, but I don't want that. I, I just want to start from here, 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 here. You get you get the point, right? But for some reason, okay, this is the pattern. So what end up happening is that it just gonna gives you this um, this weird jiggaloo kind of a pattern, which is kind of nice. Now, if you want to make them all equal distance, I typically use this part right here, justification spread to fit, okay? Uh, if you don't care about, let's say, the real distance of it, right? Spread to fit works fine, okay? What spread to fit does is that it makes it all the same so that the pattern all fills in nicely. Now, if you want to make it uh, so that they're uh, at the same distance, you can do a beginning or the uh, end, right? 
or center. Typically center works fine and then you say truncated pattern. So what this does is that it takes the pattern, uh, it's going to place it in the middle and then truncate it whatever is left over. So let's do that and say okay. And there you go. So you sometimes get that little nib at the end. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, you have the choice. I think that the best uh, result I usually get is spread to fit. Okay. So how easy is that? It's pretty easy. Okay. I'm just going to show you some example you can build with railing. Uh, so here I'm just going to open up uh, a project. So this is just kind of like the, the, the simplest part, how to build the railing. You just take one, make sure they're equal distance. Um, here I'm just going to show you an example uh, what you can build with railing. So here I have a rail railing family. You can also build benches with railing. So the nicest thing about railing is that it can host to topography. So if you have like um, topography that's like, you know, really like wonky, this becomes a very good uh, tool to kind of uh, kind of help you basically. So you don't have to physically build the curtain wall fence because curtain wall does not conform with the topography. So if you want to do like a picket fencing all along the host, this is the best best method. Okay. So for railing, uh, so here is some of the examples you can actually build out of it. So if you want to build like uh, benches or cur uh, curtain wall um, railing using um, this canopy with gutter, you can also build lockers as well. You can also do like, um, you know, if you have a uh, closet, you know, the shelving, you can also build this in. Uh, build this in. So here I'm just going to go uh, floor plan. And if you want to build in like a cabinetry, so here you go. This is a cabinetry for the base as well. So if you are building like a cabinet for let's say kitchens and stuff like that, it's a pretty, pretty uh, fast. You don't have to fill in all this cabinetry. All you have to do is just draw a bunch of lines. So here, what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna draw just the L shape. Okay, there we go. That's my L shape. And then here, I'm just gonna say, this is my cabinet top. All I have to do is just fill it in. I'm going to make this available on YouTube if people really want it. But I use this quite a bit just for, um, you know, this is my cabinetry for my unit. And what I have is just a bunch of lines with railings. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's very fast. It's like uh, if you want to do, like, um, design development, you haven't figured out what goes into that unit, all you have to do is just use railing and just draw it in. Same as lockers, and if you have canopies or any other stuff, just yeah. And here it's a it's a weird part. Okay, I use curtain wall. <laughs> the reason why I built this is because if you're doing like a sloping surfaces, uh, here I'll show you what what I mean by doing this uh, curtain wall. Okay, so let's assume that you have a curtain wall, and you want to make your floor sloped. Let's assume that this is your floor. You sloping it up. Um, slope it uh, let's say five degrees for example okay so let's assume that you want to do that normally if you use curtain wall when you attach it it does not follow that slope but for this particular case if you want to follow the slope just say pick that host pick that host and pick that host okay so here if I want to change this let's say two degrees follows the host and you notice that it basically conform to that particular location okay here we go so yeah you can build any crazy stuff with uh, with railing uh, I use it quite a bit just for a lot of this if you guys really want it oops just turn that off and if you want flashing I got flashing details as well okay so if you want to build in like a um, like a flashing where you can cut a section and see the actual detail. I uh, create that as well. You will see it in a couple of buildings that I built because it's a very, uh, it's kind of like your detail already. So it's, like, it's like a 3D detail. You can just put it in. Uh, if you want to like louvers or like venting and stuff like that, I built one that just pertains to that. Uh, especially if you're doing trench drain, railing becomes really, really useful. I think I have one right here. Like uh, if you're doing a pool, you want a quick trench drain that you know conforms to an arc 
nicest thing about this is that you can actually do an arc out of this, right? Like that. It will follow. That's why I like railing because it follows that line. So is this in a project or is it somewhere? In a it's in a folder somewhere. Um, I should probably send you guys uh, the link again just to get all this information. Um, if you want to build like a curtains and stuff like that. There's also lots of stuff like I mean if you're doing like a privacy screen as well this becomes very useful like a sheer wall kind of a thing. Um, yeah there's a couple projects uh, I've downloaded from uh, a website like there's several website that has like great railing details that I've used before. Uh, some of them I have to make make it because of the um, the nature of it right sometimes people want to customize it. Uh, one thing you can do also is that rail railroad tracks. If you if you're building like uh, sky trains and stuff like that, you see it. It's a railing. Okay. So yeah, that's that. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about is the uh, how to build the family with that offsetting. Okay. So let's assume that you have a curtain wall. Yeah, here I'll I'll just build one as an example. Let's assume that this is the curtain wall that you want to achieve. Yeah, unfortunately, Wi-Fi it's really slow. <laughs> I, will, I should open this up uh, way before. Let's assume that you want to build this. Okay, this wall. Uh, this is what it looks like. Okay, a stud, as an example. So how do you do it? So the first thing I would do is I just go into the family itself. Uh, you built in a curtain wall, okay? Uh, let's see, where is it? Curtain wall, curtain wall. Drawing curtain wall, no. Curtain wall, there we go. So, how you built that, I'm just gonna use like whatever spare parts inside Revit. So, the first thing I'll do is I'll go open up, go to your um, metric library, uh, go into the Let's say I'm not going to use structural columns, just use structural framing. If you want to do light gauge steel, that's where it is. Um, yeah, that looks like that looks like it. So have this profile in, load it in to your family. I'm assuming that's family four. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do is that you go to exterior and you want to basically say um, draw in a component. There we go. Um, you may, might as well set it to find. So that's what it looks like. Okay. Okay, that's what you want. Oh, rotate. Yeah, this is what I hate when they don't rotate properly. Okay, so here, light gauge steel, everything is good. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to. Oh yeah, I forgot to do something inside this wall. So edit the family, go inside the floor plan. The one thing you want to add in here, I forgot to mention, is uh, you want to middle of this. So this one has a middle, which is good. And the other side, okay, so this is what I want. So here, what you want is that you want to add the middle of this family, okay? Just add that in and say equal. Okay. The reason why I would do that is because when you load it in, okay, you can easily lock it down. You notice that here you can lock it down, and here if I want to like align it, oh, there we go. There's the middle point. For this particular case, uh, I would create one called the offsetting number. Okay, you could take whatever value in here. Let's say that's B. Right. Let's assume that this is uh, stud depth. Okay. And this is going to be relative. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this as a side. Now, why do I would use the middle and not the side? The reason why is that if I select the side, sometimes this stud is prone to breakage. So rather than doing that. Uh, because sometimes what happens is that when you draw in lines, um, it will pick the wrong uh, wrong reference plane. 
and most often I have to deal with a lot of this issue so you have to realign it and it does a lot of things so rather than doing that I would rather if you create one and put it in the middle and here what I'm what I did here is that I say okay stud depth is 48 so for this one offset I'm just gonna say this is gonna be offset here I can say stud depth divided by 2 okay so it gives me that number so that's stud depth is 24 I'll do the same thing here and then this one is stud depth 24 okay the next step I forgot to mention is I want the depth of this so how do you do it there is a length what is my length it's by default okay let's see if I can find length in the exterior okay if I cannot find it I have to figure out another way cut length four meters attachment elevation four meters okay let's let's do this inside Revit when you do a curtain wall you need to allow this to be a reporting parameter okay so what this does is that it tells this particular distance what that distance will be because if you don't do that you can lock it down like what happened is that for this particular stud it has a, a particular distance right here attachment distance unfortunately it doesn't know you can lock it down but most often with the stud like with the structural stuff it will prone to breakage so rather than doing that I gonna add in a parameter called reporting element so I'm just gonna say reporting and port height okay just give it a distance report height here what I can do is that this particular one I just want it to be report height so it tells me that it's four meters if I would change this you see that it automatically changed and adjusts according to the stud okay it's always good to do that okay if you have a distance um, just basically just reference that distance to whatever reporting height it's much easier than you can lock it down I, I mean I have no problem if you can lock it down but 99% of the time it will prone to breakage okay whenever you draw something it says oh sorry you can't create this so that's this is kind of like uh, minimizing the breakage of Revit okay once you have that the next step you're gonna do is align it okay which I did okay um, now I have to align it to the middle point of this okay next up you do again it's just arraying now so arraying same thing last okay I go from this particular point to this particular point right here okay in here do the same thing just lock it down okay lock it down in here I could say uh, number of studs Okay, I would do instance parameter since this is going to adjust. And now the next thing I'm gonna say is add in a parameter, uh, stud, you know, center, like, center to center, yeah. I'm gonna call it stud spacing. Most often you're gonna have 16 inches, 24 inches, or 12 inches. So here I'm just gonna go to the maximum, 24 inches. Okay, and I forgot to do something where I'm gonna say this one. Oh yeah, I have to add another one. Sorry, I forgot to add in this piece. Again, reporting, add a reporting parameter, instance, reporting, report width. Okay, always do that for curtain wall next thing you're gonna do is that you have reporting width then you're gonna say report width divided by stud spacing okay and then what you're gonna do is that oh it's gonna be five okay there we go that's your panel uh, if you want it to be 16 inches let's so say 16 inches then it's gonna be seven there we go now what you can do is that you can load it into a project uh, let's say project two Okay, let's draw in our curtain wall, friendly curtain wall. Uh, here I'm just gonna 
make it two meters. And here I'm just going to swap it out with family four. Yeah, that is very bizarre. I have to double check why you, you see that right now. It's not respecting it. Yeah, it's a glitch. A, it is glitch. I know Revit has a lot of glitch. Every time I try to break Revit, <laughs> it always <laughs> wants to glitch out. Okay, and that's the thing about this is that uh, you could do, you know, expand, 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 right? So basically, if you want to do like a really detailed kind of a design where you want to see the stud and every element and stuff like that, then this is what you do. Um, now, if you want to make it share, like let's say, for example, you want to kind of make all of this uh, and schedule it, right? Like let's say how many quantities you're going to have inside Revit, then this is where you're going to put in the share and non-share. You remember there is a button here called shared. Okay. What this does is that it tells Revit, I want this object to be shared so that I can count it if I load into a family. So let's say assuming that you want to put in shared, load into family four. Okay. Okay. And then load it in and say, this is project two. Okay. Okay. It's going to do something weird. <laughs> yeah, I already know it's going to break anyways. So what happened is that once you put in shared, where's my crit wall? Oh, it's disappeared. What happened? I have to double check because shared. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind with shared is that it will break your families. Okay. I just demonstrated that it breaks it. So the nice, like once you have everything already set up, you can actually calculate how many studs you have inside that wall. One thing I forgot to do, show you that uh, family is that it, it's prone to breakage because Revit is just a, such a pain in the butt. So once you get it in, this is kind of like the result you're going to get, right? So this element, I did I? No, I didn't do it. If I want to get into like each individual element and say how much is that, then yeah, that's another steps, okay? But for this case, it actually failed. Any questions so far? Yeah, this one it respects it. So I probably did something that it, I probably did something wrong. So I probably did something in here. So let me look at it, the family, what I did in here. Okay, edit this family. Okay. Yep, reporting height. Perfect. Yeah, I tried it. Oh, there we go. There's a the height. Yeah, respect that. Yeah, it's very, very weird. Rabbit prone to breakage. <laughs> yeah. Any questions so far? Sometimes Revit has a lot of weird quirkiness. Um, you kind of have to let Autodesk know that, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, I think what happened with this stud condition is that I use uh, the framing rather than column. I think this one is a column. So if I edit this, oops. Let's say if I want to edit this family, oh, what is it? Oh, I see. I think I know what I did. So here, if I want to edit that metal stud, oh, I see. Jeez. Family. Okay. If I want to edit that family, aha, uh -huh, I see. I think I know what I did. Okay. So what I did here is that I vetted the family. Uh, so what I did is that I created another family called generic model. And in this, I put it in as stud inside there rather than putting it directly because once you put it in directly it will break so this is kind of like the vetted process where i say the height vet this in and then after that you say you load it into the family not this one but this one then you have the family that will respect the height because previously it did not respect the height right it just be when i move it up it didn't do it so 
yeah that's another method is that you before you do anything like let's say if you want to add the the framing into this i would create a family put that into it create a height that you can actually adjust it load into this family and this is what you're going to get is that it, you're able to adjust it okay it's one step i forgot to mention all right that covers that and hopefully you learned something you guys learned a lot of things sort of hopefully the Hopefully the uh, the curtain wall is uh, it's a fun thing. You guys can try it out because it's a very simple thing. Uh, all you have to do is just know what distance does and what fixed number does, and you know you could do a lot of things with it. All right, no problem. Thank you so much. Will there be a link to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to everybody. Trevor, do you have any questions? Thank you, Simon. Yep, no problem. Oh, no, no questions on my end. All right. Oh, you just missed it. Or do you have another meeting? I